Hello, my name is Kayle Walker, and I'm in sixth grade at Clarkshaw Magnet School. I'm here with my mom, Amy Walker, to see if she has any stories about growing up here in Mobile, Alabama. So, Mom, do you have any interesting stories to share? Hey, Kayle. Uh, yeah, actually, I do have a story after looking through some of my old photo albums and trying to figure out if I'd done anything interesting as a kid, which... I know you can't imagine me as a kid. Uh, yeah, when I was younger, I had a best friend named Carrie. And her daddy was the president and general manager of one of the local TV stations here in town. And so he was able to get into all kinds of different events and things like that with press pass and everything. Uh, so one day she calls me up and it was in June um, it was about a year after we graduated high school. So she calls me up and wants to know if I want to go out that night. And I say, sure. So I said, why? Where are we going? We're going to go see Ray Charles. I said, Ray Charles? What are you talking about? Well, her dad had secured tickets for me and her and him and another friend of ours to all go to the Ray Charles concert, which I didn't even realize was going to happen, uh, down at um, the old Civic Center at Expo Hall. And nobody ever came to Mobile anymore. It, after the 80s, something happened, and there was all kinds of scandal and rumors and things. So nobody ever came. Music acts, big music acts to Mobile anymore. I mean, nobody came. Uh, so, okay, yeah, let's go, let's go. So we went to this concert, and I mean, it, you you don't know, I'm sure, Ray Charles very well anyway. You'd probably recognize him if you saw him. But he was a big deal back in the day. He was a big deal before I was even born. And, you know, I don't remember all of his songs, but I did like his songs. I liked some of the more, you know, jazz-oriented songs. And at the time, he was doing this big campaign, uh, advertising campaign for Diet Pepsi. And he had these little, these pretty little girls that would do, like, backup singing for him. And it was a thing they called, I think, the Uh-Huh Girls or whatever. So it was a thing back then, and so everybody knew who he was. Anyway, so he comes to Mobile, and, you know, I was checking it out. He was, in January of that year, I, I found a picture of him with Jack Nicholson and Michael Jackson, which is, oh my God, you know. And then I found out uh, about 10 days after that, he went and did this big inauguration show uh, for HBO for the Clintons when he was first elected, and it was a huge deal. There were all kinds of famous people there. There was, you know, you know there's a picture of him and Sidney Poitier and Harry Belafonte, and then there was singers there like Tony Bennett, Luther Vandross, Ben E. King, Melissa Etheridge, Kenny Rogers, Bob Dylan, Aretha Franklin, Diana Ross. I mean, it was unbelievable. In March, he released an album and was in Jet Magazine and with, was doing a song with NXS, which is unbelievable. Uh, also, th that year in March, he did um, something at the Wald Waldorf Astoria with the New York Boys Choir, and the tickets were $600. Uh, again, it was for charity. Let's see, yeah, in May, he was put into the Songwriter Hall of Fame and received a Lifetime Achievement Award. It was presented to him by Billy Joel. And, and I know all of you people have to know who Billy Joel is. You don't know who he is, but you know some of his songs. And he was there with, with legendary people, Paul Anka, Barry Gordy, Lou Rawls, Bobby Weinstein. Um, 
that that was in May. Now he came to Expo Hall on June eighth of ninety three. Uh, but later appearances that he made that year, he went to Caesar's Palace in Vegas, to San Francisco, Atlanta, New York City, L.A., Boston, Pittsburgh, and then he went to Stockholm, Hamburg, Berlin, and then came back to America, went to Atlantic City, Long Island, went up to Montreal and Toronto, over to Seattle, then he was invited to the White House. Then he went over again across to Europe to Brussels, Frankfurt, Munich, Barcelona, Milan, London, Paris, Stockholm, Oslo, and ended up in Kingston, Jamaica. So he did all these huge appearances in these huge cities around the world. The one he did in one of the one of the German ones that he did was with Fats Domino. I mean, how unreal is that in Germany? Having our, you know, blues and jazz legends doing concerts over there. And so then he comes back to Mobile, which was crazy. Everybody goes to New Orleans, or they do the music festivals and stuff now, which is, he did a few of those that year too with some really famous people. But it, it it was it was a huge honor to to see him because I knew that he was like super famous. Well, then afterwards, her dad surprised us. We went outside and went up to his tour bus and got to meet him. And we stood there for just not very long. We kind of walked right on in. And I guess it was like a backstage pass, but he was on the road. I mean, he was always going. There was no backstage at this point. So uh, we stood there by his by his bus and got a couple pictures with him. And I just thought that was absolutely amazing. He was, uh, he was nice. He didn't, you know, say a whole lot. He kind of just smiled and <laughs> took the picture. And just about right after that picture, that last picture of us, he climbed up on the tour bus with his uh uh-huh girls and left. And that was it. And I don't remember hearing much about this concert, you know, in the media and stuff before or after. I did find a newspaper clipping, I think, the day after or a couple days after. So that's my story. That's just one of many, I'm sure. And, uh, There are definitely adventures to be had if you keep your ears open.